developer experience is one of the most important aspects of modern day coding. Vue is already known for having great DX, but in this video, we'll go over three of my favorite quality of life libraries that I use on almost every project. First is Vue Macros. And if you use script setup, you'll know that it comes with two compile time macros that help with defining props and emits. Vue Macros takes us a step further by giving even more compile time macros and also improve the DX of some of the existing ones. The three that I use the most are defined options that allow us to control traditional component options like name and inherit attributes. Typically, if you want to do this, we'd have to create a non-setup script with an export default, but thanks to this macro, we can do it directly inside script setup. Define props refs, which is a shorthand for two refs defined props and allows us to destructure our props safely. And the last one is a better defined feature, which allows us to use imported types as a generic type inside of our defined props and define emits. And this last one is the feature that gets me the most excited. Currently in Vue, we have two ways to use the type-based defined props. We can either pass an object literal or reference an interface or object in the same file. But let's imagine that we had some interface called base props that we want to reuse across several components. Since we have to import this into our components, we run into some limitation. If we use it directly in our defined props, or if we try to use an interface that extends base props, we get a runtime error. And this is because of some limitations of the compiler, and these are admittedly being worked on and planned for Vue 3.3. But if we set of view macros, we can get this functionality now, where we can import base props, use it directly in our defined props, and we're good to go. And one of the reasons why I really like working with view macros is it's meant to be sort of a testing ground for potentially useful macros. We saw this type inference is getting worked into the view core library, but things like defined options are already getting feedback in the views RFC repo. So if you want to be involved in getting some of these macros into the core library, try them out and leave your thoughts on some of these RFCs. The second library that I've added to my default stack is Fontaine, which is a really easy way to prevent layout chis coming from custom fonts. If you're using a custom font, oftentimes your user's browsers will have to download it before it can be used. While this download is happening, the browser will use a fallback font that's locally downloaded. And this is often your user system font, but if your custom font and the fallback font have different sizes, this can cause a layout chip. Fontaine solves this by providing smarter fallbacks with two easy steps. First, it uses capsized CSS to read font metric data from your web fonts. Second, it takes these font metrics to generate smarter fallback font families that will make your local fonts better match the dimensions of your web fonts. This means that you want have to worry about layout shifts when your custom font is loaded. And the reason I love this is just how easy to use. For Nux, for example, you can install the module, add it to your Nux config, and all the additional font metrics and font families are taken care of for you. So you can get better UX and Lighthouse scores for really minimal effort. And before we get to the third library, I want to say thanks to the sponsor of this video, Storyblock. Storyblock is a headless CMS that I just love working with. Even though its API works with any tech stack, I've made a few videos on using it in both Nux 3 and Astro, and I love how plugged in they are with the Vue community, creating Vue plugins, Nux plugins, plugins and a ton of things that make it really easy to build view components and then directly build and edit pages with these components inside of a really sleek visual editor. This makes it so non-technical people can use your custom components really simply. It's super extensible and a great experience both on the technical side and the content side, so I highly recommend checking them out and show them some love for supporting the channel. The last library is probably one that y'all saw coming, but it's view use. It's one of the most well-known view libraries and for good reason. I see it as a must-have for any view developer. It's a collection of over 200 view composition utilities that give you access to a ton of useful features like some more advanced reactivity composables, observing browser events, and a lot, lot more. I've made a few videos covering some of the composables like use infinite scroll, use intersection observer, and use VE model. And these are just some of the use cases that you'll find yourself needing on a regular basis that Vue use already has a solution for. Obviously, I can't go over all 200 plus composition utilities, but definitely check out the docs to see what it has to offer. But I think one of the reasons I love Vue use is not just because of how useful it is, but because it's one of the best examples of how to write Vue composition functions. It's a great resource to learn from, and I highly recommend checking out the source code to see how it's written. I've learned so many different techniques, some of them I've already shared in other videos, just from reading through the source code. And these are just three of the libraries that I find extremely useful to accelerate my view development experience. I know that everyone's going to have different opinions and have more recommendations, so leave anything down in the comments below, like and subscribe for more view content, and I'll see you in the next video.